Hey, welcome back to the channel. So we have here the skill description for Embla and Parmi and some of our friends in the PTR server take a screenshot of them and some of them even have tested them. So let's take a look at uh, Embla's stats first. So Embla will have 1200 attack, 12000 HP, 800 defense and 103 uh, speed at level 60 which is a standard DPS uh, stats here so and going to the first skill she attacks one enemy damage 120 percent attack and then she will pursue it if they if she hits someone who already have a corrupted seed so do take note that it only triggers once per turn so that means that if you give her astral witchcraft she won't pursue the second time if she do pursue it uh, on the first time so yeah you can give her a salvage craft if you do target a different target aside from the from the one you previously attacked in order to inflict a lot of corrupted seed at once or you can just go war machine of or hammer of thor in order to maximize either her bleed damage or uh, just her detonation damage the second skill attacks one enemy two times, damage per hit 110% attacks, which in total will deal 220% attack. Steals one buff, the second hit detonates the enemy's corrupted seed, infects another enemy with corrupted seed. We can already guess here, guess this from the patch notes that because that second hit detonates the enemy's corrupted seed, that means that is the uh, last hit that this skill will do. So we already know that this second skill only hit two times. But the third skill, the third skill really do gives us hope now because it only it hits two times. So that means that she is still all right to be brought into a pep. So damage per hit 130% attacks, which means that in total she will deal 260% attack and each hit has 80% chance of inflicting defense down for two turns, which is understandable because she deals a lot of damage, like all of her skill, except for the first skill. Wait, if the first skill do pursue, all of her skill deals more than 200% of her attack damage, which means that she is a really, really strong single target DPS Esper, definitely. So in order to balance that, the developer gives her a lower chance in inflicting debuffs. So 80% chance in inflicting defense down and also 50% chance in inflicting disease. If you can read that in the Corrupted Seed explanation, which is very, very long. <laughs> so you do want to bring another uh, Esper in order to inflict the disease debuff on AFAP, which still gonna be the best option for you is Joser. So she will be a backup for Joser and uh, it's good, it's good. That means that you can definitely inflict disease on APAP with both of them. And then dispels one debuff on the attacker. This is what we are looking for for APAP because that means that she will keep on dispelling her allies debuffs every time they attack APAP. And I think, I think how this works is gonna be like this because at the first turn when you have no poison at all, you have nothing to dispel. So you hit APAP and you will receive two stacks of poisons. But then afterwards, uh, every time you attack APAP in the subsequent turns, you will only receive one poison stack because you will dispel the other one, the one from the previous uh, poison. But if you do combine her with Brewster, Brewster will only have one poison stack at max because every time he do pursuit, he will transfer his own debuff by his own passive and also by Mblas Corrupted Seed. So Brewster can actually remove two stacks of poison every time he moves, which is a really, really good combo with Embla in AFAP. And then you also have Jin Yu Yao who will remove one stack of poison every time Jin Yu Yao moves which will make all of your allies stay healthy with as the least amount of poison as much as possible like probably at most one or two stacks which will make your survivability almost guaranteed. This is why Embla is the best choice when you are dealing with AFM. 
And then when corrupted seed is detonated, deals damage and inflicts two bleed stacks. And because these bleed stacks use your attack uh, stats as damage, that means that if you do want to emphasize on this bleed damage, do get the War Machine Rally. And uh, damage per stack, 60% of the original caster's attacks. Do notice that this is at resonance 6, so at uh, below resonance 6, it will deal 35% of the caster's attack, which is great because this damage is per stack and uh, maximum stack is 5 stacks on resonance 6 and 8 stacks at uh, below resonance 6, which is more than we what we expected to happen in the previous video because I expected her to only have like 36% attack per explosion or 51% attack per explosion in order to deal the same damage as Gaius or Xiangman but this is this is just insane if you manage to explode one corrupted seed x maximum stack that means that you will deal 35% attack times 8 which is 280% of her attack damage that is one explosion oh my god that is a lot and i can understand that because it's really really hard to reach eight stacks because you do need a lot of multi hits in order to reach that eight stacks so if the enemy manages to cleanse that debuffs uh midway then uh you will not reach that maximum damage but the thing is that you can combo her with the twins uh she Yi and she Yuzi they both deal four hits in both their second skill and third skill if you bring them together so uh the way this works is that if you inflict corrupted seed because embla skill are all single target damage you will inflict corrupted seed at the first target you hit and then that first target uh you can hit him with Chechuyi and Cheyuzi's third skill and it will straight away detonate the corrupted seed because you will hit him eight times with just both of them and then if that explode if you have Embla at resonance 2 it will deal damage to all enemies with 150% of Embla's attack that's that in the explanation in the, in the text so it's not as high as we expect it to be because the number is different for the AoE damage compared to the to the carrier's damage but it still will deal a lot of damage because in total the 150% attack will deal uh, to 4 targets which uh, in total will deal 600% attack damage and then plus the 280 which means that you will deal 880% attack damage in total with just a single explosion which is the same damage as Gaia's second skill <laughs> that is just one explosion although Gaia's uh, advantage is still that he doesn't need critical rate uh, stats at all so he will still have more critical damage and attack bonus in his rally which will still deal more but the thing is that you can keep inflicting and exploding this corrupted seed infinitely every single turn if you have the the multi hits needed to explode this corrupted seed that's why that's why the reson resonance 6 uh, uh, function is gonna be game changing because uh, reducing the maximum stacks from 8 stacks into 5 stacks means that it's easier to explode this corrupted seed at maximum stacks and also you will deal 300% of Mblast attack damage if you do reach that maximum stack so yeah so the way this works is that you will hit that first target Shechui Shechui will explode that with their third skill it will spread the corrupted seed to two other enemies so even though it hits all enemies with damage it will only spread the corrupted seed to two other new enemies so those two new enemies will now have the corrupted seed and you can now use Shechui and Shechui's second skill in order to hit both of them eight times and explode those uh, corrupted seed at the same time which will deal 880% times two 
and that will definitely, definitely kill every single one of your enemy, because that will deal a lot of damage. So, so yeah, and also when the debuff uh, disappears, whether it gets cleansed by the enemy, whether it explodes, whether uh, it it expire but by any means embla will receive 30% ap which is a lot because that will almost guarantee that she will keep on moving every time the crop to see it uh, explode or get cleansed and if it does get cleansed she will be able to inflict the crop that seed again because basically every single attack that she does will inflict this corrupted seed so this is insane you don't really need to give her speed unless you do want her to move at the very first turn and straight away want to explode that corrupted seed but like i said in the previous video you can play her in two ways whether you want to play her like uh, uh, old school brewster which you want to give her speed in order to inflict the debuffs before or before all of your other esper move or you will make her move last and maximize her attack bonus and then on the second turn onwards your damage will be will deal a lot with this corrupted seed just like much like brewster on the second turn onwards so that is insane that is insane so if you manage to like cleanse uh all five corrupted seed on the, all of the enemies like if the enemy have like clara or something c will move embla will move <laughs> the moment you cleanse all of those debuffs so yeah uh really really strong and i do have some information here for those who have already tested embla so plans counts as an early detonation it's still damaged so this is insane so you can actually use her in pvp because you can actually counter a jin yu yao and sally combo because they will keep cleansing this corrupted seed and this corrupted seed will keep on exploding which will make embla keep on getting ap boost which will make her keep moving to keep uh, putting new corrupted seed on the enemy which will keep getting cleansed by enemies genio and sally and so far so on this will keep going on and on again so this is insane and then tricky uh tricky petrify on maximum stacks removing debuff not working uh but i'm not sure whether it still works if uh, the corrupted seed is not reaching maximum stack so if it get cleansed that means that it might still work tricky pa uh, passive will uh, will work so this will be very very interesting because once someone confirmed this that means that embla will definitely kill the genial and sally combo in pvp together with tricky this is gonna be insane <laughs> and also it applies to bleed debuff so if if the uh, corrupted seed doesn't trigger tricky's passive then the bleed will definitely trigger tricky's passive so yeah and then the ap gain plus 30 percent for debuff remo removal if uh, the removal includes detonation auto detonation and plans can happen multiple times at once that means that like i said before Embla will just keep on moving whether uh, no matter how you remove this corrupted seed C will keep on moving and a red damage don't count as a hit poison bleed reflect young one maximum stack explosion that means uh, Yun Chuan Ba will not work in here but at least it's already like OP enough <laughs> that she doesn't need the red damage in order to trigger her corrupted seed although although that's gonna be a really really op like <laughs> a broken at the point of broken if red damage does do include in the in the multi hit needed for you to reach the maximum stack and then yun chuan do counts as a hit so that that means that c is really really good when you are uh combined when you combo her with yun chuan so i can already see that in sentinel han yun chuan team will get a nice addition together with Embla if you if you want to put them together because they work 
so so good like they they their teamwork is gonna be the best because Yun Chuan will give a lot of miss rate and speed up speed down that will help a lot in uh, um, making your whole team survive and then Embla will deal so much damage because you can keep inflicting corrupt scene and you can keep exploding them because the battle takes a long long time and you will definitely reach that 8 stacks and then you can also apply the corrupt seed to the minion and it will explode if you kill the minion you don't necessarily need to uh, hit the minion eight times whenever they die the corrupt seed will explode so i can already see that embla will be your mvp in your sentinel hunt because she will deal a ton of damage more so than how much Gaius can deal this is insane in pve situation C is insane especially especially in a very long fight so she will help a lot in tower she will help a lot in calamity she will help a lot in even the new content where you compete with other players on who can finish the tower faster uh, that event i forgot the name so she will be really really strong in that <laughs> oh and by the way by the way Embla can also be hard countered by Tricky because Embla makes all of her allies dispel their debuffs every time they attack the carrier of the Corrupted Seed that means that they will all trigger Tricky's passive so it's gonna be really really bad if you use Embla against Tricky because uh, we do not know how this interaction gonna go because uh, if in um, Brewster case, like Brewster will be the one who gets uh, Tricky's passive, the damage from Tricky's passive because he is the one who dispel his own debuffs. But in Sally's case, because she is the source of the dispel, that means that every time her allies moves, in Sally will instead be the one who gets damage from Tricky's passive. So I do want to test this uh, in Embla whether the dispel comes as Embla as the source of dispeller or it will be just like Brewster the person who attacks are the one who dispels their own debuffs which means that this interaction gonna be interesting whether you will keep triggering Tricky's passive and kill Embla every single time or it will just spread to every single Esper that the enemy has every time they remove their debuffs by attacking the carrier of the Corrupted Seed so this will be really really interesting so yeah um, let's take a look at that when uh, Embla comes to our server so yeah, that's that's about uh, Embla. So now let's go to Parmi. Let's see Parmi's attributes. Uh, attack 900, HP 12,000, defense 900, speed 102. So she is a balanced Esper. So you can build her any how you want. She will be average in all uh, builds. So the, her first skill is exactly the same as Fabrice, that means 100% attack grants recovery to the ally with the lowest HP percentage for two turns, which is good because usually when you use a full controller team, you do lack a healer, so she can act as a backup healer, like, like uh, you know, a small healer in a sense. And then the second skill attacks all enemies, that means 100% attack, deals extra damage to incapacitated enemies, extra damage 50% attack, each speed grants extra damage. I think we missed this part in the patch notes. So extra damage 0.16% attack, which means that if you have 200 uh, speed, that means you will get a bonus of 32% attack, which is a lot. So you can actually build her as a damage dealer, which is really, really good because usually as a con full controller team, you don't deal that much damage. So C will be your main damage dealer in that team. All enemies HP minus 30%, which is good. 70% chance of inflicting attack down for two turns, which is also good because if you do play a full controller team, you will play the long battle, which the attack down will help you survive for longer. 
And then the third skill, attacks all enemies, damage 120% attack. Its speed grants extra damage, extra damage 0.32% attack. So if you have 200 speed, that means that will give you 64% bonus attack, which is great, that is huge. And then 100% chance of inflicting stun for one turn. And if an enemy is not stunned, it inflicts sleep on them for one turn. This is insane. So that means that the enemy will have no choice but to get disabled. So she will be your best controller as per, especially, especially when her captain ability is a speed captain. She gives 20% speed, so she can actually replace your long yan if you do need the slot, the extra slot, or you can just bring her together with long yan. And her skill has an average cooldown. Second skill, three three turns, uh, third skill four turns, so she will be the best controller as per in the game right now. You will bring her in every uh, situation where you do need some control and at least deal damage because even like Pritzker is still a better stunner compared to her because Pritzker's stun have only three turns cooldown which, will, which is able to make him permanently stun the entire enemy team by himself and also he increased speed down so he is still a better uh, stunner but army will be able to deal damage aside from being able to stun the entire enemy team so you do want to bring her, uh, them together combo army with any other controller especially Pritzker especially Pritzker so yeah, very strong, very solid controller, and she is an epic expert, so everybody will have her, everybody will definitely max her out. She is a really, really great and strong expert. And the best news is, is that Parmi is can be redeemed seven times. So if you do grind this event, you will be able to reach maximum resonance for your Parmi. That means that she will be at her maximum potential after this event ends. So yeah, I can already see that in every single content in the game, everybody will definitely gonna use Parmi as expected of Gilgamesh's mother. So that's it for tonight's video. Uh, hope you get a lot of information of this. I will definitely gonna spin a hundred golden record for Embla. If I do get her, then I can use her for APEP and Sentinel Hunt, uh, which makes my life gonna be uh, much, much easier. And if I don't get her, then that's not the end of the day. I will still save up for Ethan later on. So yeah, do let me know what you think about both of them. Really solid Esper. Really, really strong. Embla is OP. <laughs> so yeah, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.